Today we are talking about solving inequalities. And today we're going to do it by addition and subtraction. So realistically, we have done this before. Okay? This is just solving an equation. So again, what is our goal to solve an equation? And? And positive. Right? We want it to be positive and all by itself. Same thing applies. The only thing at the end is they might ask you to graph it again. Okay, so you take your answer and you graph it. All right? But that's it. That's the only thing that's different. So again, all we're really thinking about is taking and doing the opposite operation that's in the problem. So if it says subtraction, we're going to add to both sides. If it says addition, we're going to subtract to both sides. Okay? If you honestly want to do keep change change and then do it, you can, but to me that gets confusing because you got a lot of symbols in the problem there. The only time that I would think about doing keep change change is if there's two negatives back to back in the original problem. Then I would automatically turn it into an addition problem, right? Because two negatives make a positive. And then I would carry on and do it. That's all you got to do today is the addition and subtraction ones. Okay? So there's not really extra rules today compared to tomorrow. There will be a few extra rules. Um, so the other thing is then, like we said, you might have to graph it. Okay? So, real quick, let's look at a couple and then you can do the problems, okay? So, x plus 8, or I think x plus 3 is less than 8. That's it. That's all you got to do today. So, basically, you can probably look at the problems and just do it, but realistically, we're going to get into some more complicated ones. So, again, I'm going to cover up the x. What do I do to get rid of plus 3? Subtract. Subtract it. And whatever I do to one side? Got to do the other. So my threes cancel out, same number but different signs. So x is less than what? Five. Five. That's it. That's my answer. Now, if they ask you to graph it, don't forget to make your number line. Show me where zero is. If you don't show me where zero is, you're going to get it wrong. Five is positive. Again, I don't have to count out the spots. But open circle or a dot? Open. Why? Because it's, it's not equal to, right? So we got an open circle. And again, now, if we write it where the variable comes first, we get to cheat by using the symbol. But we're going to shade which way? Left. Left. So again, this is where you all did the shade right, but don't forget, you got to color in that arrow. Why? So it's going to show that it goes on forever. Because it's all of these down over here, too, right? So if you're going to do it Mr. Stoffel's way, I don't care. That's fine. But then you still have to color in that arrow. And that's where a lot of you missed that one half. Okay? That's it. Alright? Um, the one, another one that I would look at or show you would be this one. C minus a negative 2 is less than or equal to 3. So this is the one right here where I would automatically, any time from here on out, when I see, I'm not going to include these parentheses, but that's how it was written in the, in the book. And any time that I see back-to-back -back negatives, I'm going to make it into one giant plus sign. And then I'm going to go back and I'm right back to what we just got done doing, right? How do I get rid of plus two? Subtract two from both sides. They cancel out. C is less than or equal to one. Okay. And the only difference between this graph right here and this graph that we just did was this one right over here would have what? A closed dot. Right? A filled in dot. Okay? Everybody okay with all that? Yes, sir. Alright. The last nine would be something like this. Four is greater than or equal to S minus two-thirds. So again, some of you might try to tackle this by doing the problem 
meaning to just go and use the fraction in the problem. Some of you that absolutely hate fractions, I would recommend getting rid of the fraction. If you know how to punch that into your calculator, then use your calculator. But to me, if I'm going to do this problem, I'm going to take the entire problem and I'm going to multiply by that denominator, whatever the number is in the bottom. Now, the only thing that's going to happen here is that some of your numbers are going to get a little bigger, but that's okay. All right? So then we get 12 is greater than or equal to 3s minus 2 because my 3s would cancel each other out. Now, the disadvantage of this or doing a problem like this is that we haven't really talked about these kind of problems. This is a two-step problem. So realistically today, this would be harder for us to do because we haven't done these kind of problems and we won't do these until next week. So if you get a fraction one today, you can try to do that if you remember how to do that, but I don't want to confuse you by showing the two steps today. So what I'm getting at is if you don't like fractions today, then turn this into a decimal and use the decimal by punching it into your calculator. Okay? And we'll go back and show you that other version of it in a few days. But realistically, if I'm going to do this right here, I can still add my two-thirds and add my two-thirds. But what is two-thirds as a fraction? Or sorry, as a decimal? This is one of those. 0.66. 0.66, right? So then we would punch in 4 plus 0.66666 and we get our answer, right? Or basically we have four and two thirds. Now, here's the another one where I want to show you if they ask you to graph this one, I will take the time, unless you can absolutely see this, to rewrite the problem so my variable is first. But when I rewrite my inequality to turn it around, make sure it's still pointing towards the S. Okay? And so again, now we would just have less than or equal to four and two thirds. That makes sense to everybody? So again, if you have a fraction today, I would highly recommend you turning it into a decimal, punching it into your calculator. All right? It's just gonna be a little easier for you. And then we'll get into those other kind by eliminating the fractions when we get to that stage of our process. Everybody good with that? But that's it. That's all I got to do today. Okay? So, you want to see any more examples? No. All right. So they really break these sections down for you into um, the individual segments, meaning adding and subtracting today. Tomorrow we'll do multiplying and dividing. Okay? And there's a little bit more extra in multiplying and dividing, but we'll get to that. Come on.